Hi, I'm back here again. Today we're going to be discussing how to tune up a bandsaw. My name is Ernie Kleiman. I've been a woodworker for about 35 years. And I just wanted to share with you some of the things I've learned about using a bandsaw. If you have any questions at the end of the video, you can email me at www.ateliertommy.com. Okay, let's start off right off the get go. The first thing you got to make sure is you get a good engineer square. Make sure that your table is absolutely dead flat to the trunnions, and the trunnions are located underneath the table saw. This is a jet 12 inch uh, consumer grade bandsaw, which I've gotten a lot of use out of, and it's an excellent bandsaw for just general work around the shop for woodworkers, instrument makers, or whatever else that you're doing. But the first thing you got to make sure is that the top is in alignment with the rest of the bandsaw. So typically, I can't show it to you over here, there's a small post under the bottom that regulates the height, I should say that the degree of height on the top over here it should be absolutely dead flat, as close to 90 degrees as you can get it in parallel. Because you have to have the blade parallel to the table at all times. So I'm going to lift up the column over here very carefully. I want to make sure that this four inch, four inch engineer square is absolutely dead square at 90 degrees to the blade. For most straight cuts that you want to use, you want to make sure it's and lock it down in the back. On this uh, bandsaw, I've actually bored out, taken out the original quarter inch uh, threaded screw that hold, aligns this to 90 degrees and replaced it with a 3 8 one because it kept going out of alignment at all the time. So that's one thing I did to make sure the table is nice and flat. Another thing that's really important is your guides. On this one here, I've used cool blocks and replaced them with the uh, conventional steel guides because if the blade catches in anywhere on the steel guides, you're going to lose and break some of your teeth. So you always want to make sure that on your upper and lower guides over here, you have the thickness of about a piece of newspaper, which is about three thousandths of an inch clearance between the guide and the blade. Similarly, for the back, you want your bearings to turn nice and freely. If, they, if you hear any clicking or ticking or any extraneous noises from the back of your bearing, once it contacts your blade, that means it's time to change your bearing, get a new one. And um, I usually, after about an hour's worth of use, I always lubricate the top and lower bearing to make sure that they're running sm smoothly to provide support for the back of the blade. Another thing that I do is when I first install the blade, I round over the back of the blade with a, with a stone. I basically use a one coarse stone on either side and then I go over with a fine stone and cut it all around so the back profile of the bandsaw blade is nice and smooth with no sharp edges. Another thing you've got to be aware of is you've got to make sure that you're on a, a consumer grade bandsaw like this, that your blade, which is, has a crown in the middle, is always riding in the middle. There's a slight crown on the bandsaw wheel here, on these consumer grade bandsaws, and the blade runs in the middle. I don't really recommend anything over half an inch on a 12 or 14 inch bandsaw, because frankly they can't be t tensioned up that well. Uh, some people have gone to uh, tensioning a bandsaw blade by replacing the tension guide. But if you're going to go to a lot of trouble and spend a lot of money, you might as well get a much better bandsaw. And another thing to watch out for, make sure your tires are always nice and clean. Uh, there's a little brush over here which I've taken out today to clean it up. Um, another thing to watch out for on a bandsaw is the kind of blades you purchase. The uh, lower grade blades I won't mention names, but usually I run about a 3 8 of an inch, 3 TPI skip tooth blade on this bandsaw because I do a little bit of uh, resawing with it. And after I finish resawing it and it gets dull, I just use it for general purpose cutting all around. So let me review some of the main points of maintaining your bandsaw. Make sure your table is always dead flat. Make sure that your, your uh, bandsaw blade is perpendicular and square to your table so it's riding at 90 degrees. 
Make sure your bandsaw blade is running in the middle, on the center, on the upper tire and the lower one as well. Make sure your back bearing is about half a millimeter or one sixty-fourth an inch behind the blade and it's spinning freely. If it's making any kind of a noise, go to a bearing supplier and change the bearing, you'll notice a big difference. Um, the other thing is, the, this, this, there's a little hookup over here on the back, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's for a uh, shop vac, and I strongly recommend you use that, otherwise the whole interior of the bandsaw will be clouded up with dust. Occasionally you might want to come up and clean all the dust around the bearings and the blades. Set your guides really, really close, three thousandths of an inch, and that ends bandsaw tune-up. Thank you.